this is the first in a new series of repair videos and if you've been watching my channel for any length of time then you will almost certainly recognize this this is an ADM3 dumb terminal and uh, this is another one I've got to repair I've got a number of these and uh, the various uh, different uh, types uh, different color schemes different uh, ages of manufacture uh, this is a fairly interesting one it's um, not the same as the ones we've seen in the past. The previous ones and most of the machines I have are based on a PCB that looks like this. And um, you're probably also aware that I've made a reproduction of this particular board and it's available as a bare board on my website. Um, but the ADM3 terminal was fairly popular and the majority had a board that looked something like this. Totally discreet, there was no central CPU all the functions that were in it um, were kind of made up using mostly TTL logic. Uh, there is one large scale device on here which is the uh, UART and we've got some uh, ROM as well. Uh, some uh, RAM and the rest is all uh, essentially TTL logic and that generates all the required timing signals, uh, all the control, the uh, in out the serial basically all the control um, that is required for a dumb terminal um, but it does make the board very big and cumbersome there are over 100 ICs on this board and um, this is where this particular ADM3 differs now before we get inside you can probably already tell it's got a major issue and anyone that's seen this before will no doubt be aware of what the problem with this is uh, but I'll open it up and we'll have a look inside. It's very dirty. I may even re-finish um, the case on this one. It's fairly badly worn uh, along the front corner. It's got some fairly deep gouges, so I'll come back to this uh, if and when I can get it working. Uh, but I'll get it opened up. We'll have a look inside and see how this differs from uh, the standard type of ADM3 terminal and also uh, what this is all about. So looking inside the unit, you can see that on the uh, actual CRT side, it's almost identical to a standard unit. And what's causing the uh, weird um, artifact on the front of the display is um, somebody's managed to smash the neck off the CRT. So if I do get this working, I'll need to find a replacement CRT for it. I don't have any uh, spares of these and um, they're quite hard to get hold of in the UK so I'll need to try and find something that uh, I can use as a replacement CRT. Um, for the repairs I'll probably just use the CRT off another unit. Um, it plugs in using a standard connector for the ADM3 so this, is, uh, this will plug into the big board I showed earlier and it will work fine. But this is where we get into a very different machine now is if we look at the actual control board this is what damaged the CRT by the way, whoever put this board in didn't sit it down all the way. You can see that the case is broken here. So I think someone just uh, took this out, plonked it on and there should be a pin that sticks out of this mounting here and I think they just rested this on top of that pin so it was too high up and then when they closed it this metal plate hits the tube and it smashes the end off. So if you do have one of these be very careful when you refit the board. This metal chassis will easily smash the CRT if you're not very careful and get it positioned correctly. Um, but this is uh, quite an interesting um, modification. This was a, it's kind of almost an aftermarket um, upgrade for the ADM3, although some were manufactured using this. And it's a, it's functionally similar to the standard um, ADM3 dumb terminal. But where it differs, as you can see, is that it uses a large-scale integration device. And this um, particular device is an NS405. If you're not familiar with the NS405, then it is really um, most of the circuitry of the ADM3 main board, uh, kind of, uh, all crammed into one device. And if we look at the spec sheet for it, it's quite an interesting device. It's got um, all the... Uh, features that we had within the ADM3 uh, motherboard, that huge board. You can see how much small this is, the case is mostly empty. And um, this contains a microcomputer, so um, it's actually got a, a microprocessor in here and it's kind of like a pick in some ways. It's got a microprocessor core 
and then various uh, kind of peripheral um, parts to the device that make it very suitable for this application. In fact, it was designed as a, a display and terminal management device. And so what we have in here is the microcomputer, a CRT controller, so that generates all the signals we require to drive the uh, sync for the CRT. It has a DMA controller to allow efficient um, movement of data from one place to another within the system. A character generator, so that replaces the uh, ROMs and all the timing circuitry required to generate the characters on screen. And of course, it's all integrated into one device, so we don't need lots of external glue logic to make that all work. Um, it's got a UART built into it, board rate generator, so you again don't need the external uh, clocks and dividers, etc. Interrupt controller, uh, parallel it out, and timer. So it has all the things that we need to really make this um, system apart from RAM. As we look down here at the block diagram, you can see it just has a, a simple interface to external RAM on the board. Have the usual level shifters for driving the RS232, the power supply. So we have the controller itself. We've got an external ROM here that um, holds the code that the processor uses, uh, the RAM, and then the rest of it is just really uh, some very simple glue logic to uh, make all this work. I've got no idea if this works or not. Um, we'll get into that in the next video in this series. And if we look underneath this, what we have is a simple power supply. So there's nothing much in here. This is just basically a screened transformer. So again, very similar arrangement to what we had in the standard unit. It's just a different screening arrangement. And in fact, you can plug this directly in and it will work fine. And looking on the uh, main uh, unit, uh, main board, you can see that we have the uh, rectifiers here. These replace the bridge rectifiers on the uh, standard board and the transformer pl plugs in here. We've got the regulators and smoothing caps. And again, they just um, duplicate the functionality of um, the regulators on the uh, main board. This can, of course, be much simpler and smaller because we aren't drawing anything like as much power. This uh, uses far less than the 100 odd uh, devices we had in the huge board that we normally find in the ADM3. Let's move this across. We now also have a much simpler interface to the keyboard. So if we look at this, notice there's only a few connections going through to the keyboard and we have a, um, a controller of sorts on the keyboard itself. So the keyboard is also kind of semi-intelligent. It's got some control on here for making the interface between the keyboard and the main board much simpler. Uh, again, I've got no idea if this works. I don't know what the condition of this unit is and um, I don't know why uh, it was being worked on before and what caused the breakage of the CRT. Label down here. Okay, that's just the label off the CRT. Um, so clearly somebody was in here trying to chase some problem down. Uh, I don't know what that was. That's something we'll need to investigate. Uh, but unfortunately, I am going to need a CRT at some point. But what we'll do in the next video is we'll um, get the uh, board hooked up. I'm not going to drive it from this. Uh, what we can do is drive it, at least initially we don't need to hook it up to this. I can drive this directly from the bench power supply. So that's what we'll do. We'll hook this up to the bench supply. Unfortunately, I don't have any schematics for this. If anyone's got schematics or can point me towards some schematics for this, then uh, please leave a comment. Um, but other than that, we'll start investigating this. We'll start looking at the power supply. We'll drive it from the bench supply and we'll use the data sheet to try and figure out uh, how to get this thing working. It may already work, I suspect not. Uh, incidentally, this um, white uh, stuff down here is it's just what uh, was blasted out of the CRT when it was broken. And uh, I will, of course, give this a good clean before we start working on it. 
so that will be quite an interesting project, uh, very different from the standard uh, ADM3 mainboard and uh, hopefully it will make an interesting series of videos.